G'day everyone and welcome to the first Rural Flying Dock PowerPoint presentation. The idea of these videos will be to cover some common general practice presentations in about five to seven minutes. And the first one we'll cover this week is Pityriasis versicolor after I saw a case in clinic about a month ago. So Pityriasis versicolor is a fungal infection and it's caused by the organism Malassezia furfa, which is a yeast. It's the same organism implicated in seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff, and it's not contagious. Some of the predisposing factors. So it's more common in young adults, especially those with oily skin. So you can imagine those going through puberty with, with lots of acne would be uh, affected. Also, it's more common in warmer weather, so that's when your patients might be presenting to you. Uh, it can be increased with uh, more sweat production, so people with hyperhidrosis, or even just doing more aerobic exercise out in the sun. Of course, those on oral steroids and the immunocompromised are more susceptible uh, for fungal growth on the skin too. So the clinical manifestation, um, if any symptoms, uh, patients will, will present with some mild pruritus, but the main presentation being because of a cosmetic concern about the look of their skin, so either an increased or decreased in the pigmentation. The lesions themselves will be sharply demarcated macules, and on untanned skin, so very fair Caucasian uh, patients, they'll appear light brown, and those with more tan skin, they will actually be hypopigmented. And more common on the upper trunk, uh, upper legs and arms, and also as high as the neck and the scalp. A woods light can be used and the lesions will fluoresce blue-green under this. So here's a typical picture of uh, someone's back with some pityriasis versicolor on it and you can see the this typical hypopigmentation that's common with someone with some darker skin. And again with Eye of Faith you might be able to see a bit of um, blue-green fluorescence there with the woods lamp. So your differential diagnoses, if you have the hypopigmented lesions, those that are lighter in colour, of course vitiligo must be considered, but also pityriasis alba, um, alba being the Latin for white. These lesions are more common on the face of younger kids in the summer, um, and it's not sh they're not sure of what the cause is and there's no real treatment for them, they, they self-resolve. If the lesions, lesions are hyperpigmented, um, then you should consider ringworm, Pityriasis rosea with a, a herald patch on the back usually. In the older populations, gut ate psoriasis and numular eczema. Investigations aren't usually warranted given that it's a largely uh, clinical diagnosis. It, once you see a few cases, you'll be able to pick it pretty easily. Um, but if you're unsure, then obviously skin scrapings can be obtained and sent to the lab for direct microscopy with certain stains and also culture. Uh, Management-wise, if the organism is causing dandruff that's annoying the patient, then uh, selenium sulfide, 1 to 2.5% can be used, uh, the trade names being Selsun Blue 5 and Head and Shoulders type shampoo. For the body itself, any of the Azol creams will do. You can choose your favourite one. I've listed some of the trade names there too, uh, Lamisil being another option. Now the way to to use these creams is to put it over the spots that are affected before bed so that's not a, not disturbed and the patient needs to adhere to this for at least two weeks. If the infection is persistent or quite extensive then you can consider oral uh, antifungals and uh, some practice points for using those are to encourage sweating an hour later that should read and not to shower for a few hours to allow the uh, antifungal to work. So some general practice points about pityriasis versicolor. It's a fungal infection. It's not contagious. Recurrence is quite common. So in the, especially in the summer months, the aim is for prevention. So trying to um, decrease the amount of sweat production. And if pityriasis versicolor is present, then um, always go for your topical antifungal first. But you can switch to an oral if it's persisting or, or a serious enough case. If that's happening, though, you might be considering asking your friendly dermatologist for some advice. And the dispigmentation actually can last for a few months after the treatment, so it's important to let your patients know that, otherwise they might bounce back to you. 
So some of the resources that I've used to uh, look at pityriasis versicolor include Fitzpatrick's, um, which is a great clinical dermatology book. Of course, the uh, the mainstay of every general practice bookshelf, Murtars, and two online resources which are fantastic, one being Dermnet that most people should know about um, from our friends across the ditch, but also one that I came across called Mycology Online, which is actually run out of the fair city of Adelaide um, at the university there. Uh, that's a really good resource if you're looking up anything to do with fungal or yeast infections. So thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the talk today and know a bit more about Pityriasis versicolor and be on the lookout for it, especially in the summer months. If you have any suggestions for further topics to cover, um, hit me up on Twitter there at Rural Flying Doc or even uh, leave a comment on the website. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.